Hello, I'm Fred Sanborn. I'm a professor of psychology at North Carolina Wesleyan College, and I was asked to do this video about emotional health during the pandemic. And I'm happy to do so. I've got my tea. I'm ready to talk. Um, I, I should tell you that I'm not a therapist or a clinical psychologist, but I am a psychologist who studies media. So today I thought I would discuss media technology and emotional health during this pandemic. So many of us, of course, have had to increase our use of technology during the pandemic. Um, you know, I've increased my use of videos like this one to reach my students and other people, whereas before I would have been teaching in person or reaching out to a group of professionals and just talking to them. Many of us do video conferencing like Zoom and Teams for work. A lot of us are doing video chat like FaceTime for interpersonal communication. And maybe you even had, have had a telemedicine appointment. That's becoming very common now, too. My point is that many of us are spending more and more time looking at screens. And sometimes we may be required to pay attention to more than one screen at a time. So if you're working at home, you might be attending to your email, your work stuff. Family issues may come up. Your kids may need help with their online schooling. Something might be happening with your phone. You're paying attention to Zoom uh, for a meeting for work. Um, all kinds of things are happening. We know Two, that technology can have some detrimental effect on our mental health. Um, one thing I want to tell you about is, is the research on multitasking, so paying attention to multiple screens or multiple things at the same time. Um, we're very poor at that. Um, and many of us are multitasking more when we're working at home. So like I said, just attending to everything, laundry kids, package deliveries, work, um, but as I said, multitasking is, is difficult for us. One study showed that when put in a driving simulator machine, people who were talking on their cell phones performed worse at driving than people who were actually intoxicated. Um, so it divides our attention. We, when, we, when we multitask, we often lose our place in what we're doing. So we go back and forth. You know, we have to try to pick up where we left off on the first task while we're moving on to the second task. And that just doesn't work very well for us. Um, and of course, many of us are now asked to repeatedly multitask. So to pay attention to each email or text as it comes in while working in front of our computers, while dealing with whatever might be happening at home. <clears throat> but human beings don't cognitively function well with that kind of divided attention. Uh, some other research has shown that social media in particular may be negatively affecting our mental health. So some research has indicated that among adolescents and young adults, especially, the increased use of social media has been associated with higher levels of depressive and other negative mental health symptoms. Now, I should tell you that this research is not conclusive, however, and some studies have shown that although there may be negative outcomes from this use, uh, this kind of use of social media, social media can also help us connect um, with others, the people we care about during this pandemic. Uh, of course, as human beings, we're social creatures. We need other people. And in some ways, social media may help us do that, especially at this time. Um, another line of research I find really interesting is uh, showing that when people take breaks from social media, like there was one study that, that asked women to take a week off of Instagram, uh, doing something like that seems to boost our happiness and positive mood. So it seems that many of us spend probably too much time on social media and thinking about the things that we see on social media. Um, and when we, when we take a break from that, that's very beneficial to us. So, you know, technology hinders us in some ways, but can media and technology be used as tools to help us with our emotional health in these times? I say yes. So uh, uh, next time I'm going to mix in some personal experience with some of the research. Um, so one way that uh, technology can help us is with wellness apps and videos. So there are a number of mindful meditation apps, um, and many of them have both a paid and a free version. Um, first of all, I want to tell you there's a huge body of literature that tells us the use of physical and mental health, um, or th the physical and mental health benefits that come along with meditation. Um, and one study in particular showed that there was a modest improvement in mental health when using meditation apps. Uh, now, research in this area is new and it's developing, but I can tell you from my personal experience, I find this very beneficial. So there's an app that I like called Headspace. It has a paid and a, and a free version as well. But I, I find the time, I, do, I use it every day, 
the time I spend meditating, which is about 10 minutes, is is very valuable to me. It's a time to to just do that. I don't. I'm not working. I'm not thinking about other things. I can just sort of unplug, and and relax a little bit. So in addition to meditation and meditation apps, uh, you know, technology can help us in this time. Of course, connect to others. So as I mentioned earlier, many many of us are using FaceTime or Zoom to connect with our friends and loved ones. Um, there, uh, people have been doing virtual happy hours with coworkers. And there are even uh, movie watch parties online. Uh, Netflix has has a function that allows you to do that. And I will say, again, another personal experience. Um, my family has a, a friend who's 92 who's been living in an assisted living facility. She's delightful. We love her a lot. And we usually go out to eat with her in non-pandemic times. Lately, though, we've had to, you know, do a FaceTime with her. It's not as good but it's good to see her face. We sit down at our table and eat a meal. She's at her table eating a meal and it helps. It helps to talk, it helps to laugh, it helps to see her. Um, another way that technology can help us in this time is with teletherapy. So uh, talking to a counselor over your phone, for example. Some studies have indicated that uh, teletherapy is just as effective or almost as effective as face-to-face -face therapy. And it's certainly much more convenient and it's certainly um, is needed in this time. And finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about using technology to help us get off of technology. So we can use technology to our advantage. Um, smartwatches are a great tool. Um, you know, mine tells me to get up and move. It tells me when I've been sitting too long. I've got these rings that I have to close for exercise and movement. And those reminders really help me a lot. Cats help too. Um, <laughs> Uh, there are also, interestingly, I haven't tried this myself, but I've been reading about some apps that we can download that can block other apps. So there are apps you can download that for a certain time you can set will block emails, they'll block um, social media apps, so you don't have to, that stuff doesn't isn't popping up on your screen and you don't have to think about it. And finally, set boundaries. I think that was the focus of, a, of another video. But with technology, I think it's especially important to set boundaries. So. For example, don't look at emails at a certain point after, after, don't look at a, emails at a certain point in the evening. So I set that boundary for myself at 7 p.m. I'm not always perfect about that, but especially for work emails, I try not to, to look at those in the evening. I try to make the evening a time for me to unwind and relax and get ready for sleep. Um, and I, another thing that I found helpful for myself is um, making some of the apps on my phone that I know can be distracting more difficult to access. So I put I, I put those on the sort of the last um, screen on my phone. So I have to swipe for social media apps and for my work email app. I have to swipe three or four times to get to those apps. And I find that um, doing that sort of breaks the habit. So sometimes I'm swiping uh, to get to those apps and I'm thinking, I, I, do I really want to be doing this right now? And I stop myself. So those are just some thoughts, some things I, I hope um, may help you. I'm also going to show you my references. I, in case you're interested in, in looking at those a little more closely, those will be there for you. It's been a pleasure um, talking to you today. I hope some of this information is helpful. And again, I'm, I'm Fred Sanborn.